So you're sitting in a doctor's office in pain and you've just been diagnosed with mastitis. But what is mastitis? Mastitis is defined as the inflammation of the breast that is characterized by physical, chemical, and bacteriological changes in the milk with or without the involvement of infection. Aside from knowing this disease affects a large portion of our bovine friends, it is a bit of a mystery. In fact, even researchers are curious to know more about this benign disease. Mastitis has no specific clinical or imaging features, but we do know that it's most commonly seen in women around the age of 40 years old. Now, because we don't often hear about mastitis, this doesn't mean it does not exist or it lacks complexity. Your body is capable of many incredible things, and one of them being infections. However, it is not always successful, so that means oftentimes we are able to fall susceptible to illness. Mastitis is seen in approximately 20% of breastfeeding women. More specifically, it is most prevalent in women that are breastfeeding and typically occurs in the first six weeks of lactation, but can occur at any time after. The highest group of women that are affected are those that are in that two to three postpartum range, accounting for 75 to 95% of the cases. Here's Brenda to tell us more. I was two weeks postpartum when I had excruciating pain to both of my breasts. Um, my range of motion was limited due to the tenderness and swelling, and I could hardly feed my newborn without coming to tears. The symptoms themselves came on quite abruptly, and before I knew it, I was running a fever, and I had a violent case of the chills. That's when I knew I had to go see someone. Now, in Brenda's case and many other women, a dose of antibiotics does the job to clear it all up. The clinical response is quite rapid and recurrence rate is approximately 10%. So your body is often very good at identifying and responding to various pathogens that threaten its first line of defense. The immune system often does this through phagocytes, neutrophils, macrophages, and natural killer cells. So those are some of the ways your immune system handles the enemies. But how does it know where to look in the first place? So let's say you take a slip and scrape your knees. Your body's first line of defense, the skin, has been compromised and the pathogens are flooding in. Your body wants to contain the spread of pathogens and get healing ASAP, so it kicks in the inflammatory response. This is your body's own fire alarm, but instead of bells and whistles, it deploys chemicals to put out the smoke, such as redness, swelling, and pain in this case. Let's take a deeper look. During mastitis, it is likely that bacteria, often originating from the mouth of the infant, gains entry via the cracks in the nipple surface allowing for an ideal environment for the replication of the bacteria. The mammary gland's immune system consists of a diverse line of defense where pathogens are eliminated within minutes to hours following the invasion. Hence, it is very important to immediately recognize the invading pathogen so the body can activate the immune response. When the pathogen is present, the innate immune system, our first line of defense, will order a cascade of defense mechanisms to eliminate the pathogen. Different pathogen-associated molecules are typically found on the surface of the bacteria and are recognized by host receptors. In the case of mastitis, this involves membrane-bound receptors belonging to the toll-like receptor family. Toll-like receptors are found on the surface of epithelial cells, and when a pathogen-associated molecule is recognized by the toll-like receptors, they initiate a signaling cascade that results in activation of NF-kappa-B transcription factors, and ultimately the activation of cytokine genes. Cytokine enhances the immune response by recruiting neutrophils to the site of infection, where they fight the bacteria. However, if the innate immunity is not capable of eliminating the bacteria, then the adaptive immune response is triggered, where B and T cell lymphocytes recognize the pathogen, and through antibacterial agents, they eliminate the bacteria. Now, aside from the physiological impact, a diagnosis of mastitis can also have a great psychological impact, not only on you as the patient, but also those around you. There are great resources available to help you and your family. So what do you do from here and how do you go about treatment? To learn more about this, you'll have to tune in next week where we have Dr. Brenda to explain the different forms of therapy available to those suffering with mastitis. But in this video, you learned what mastitis is, the demographic that is affected, the immune response behind the disease and its mechanisms. Now, until next time, take care.